Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Chimmy and I make videos every week to add value to you as I do to myself. First of all, I want to wish you a very, very, very blessed new year. In most parts of the world, the last couple of days would have been bank holidays. So I hope you've had a restful time and you are ready to take on the new year. During the last week of December, I was doing a little bit of reflection on the year that has just gone and I don't even know where to start what a year 2020 has been. Did you know that Oxford Dictionary actually classified the word quarantine as the most used word of the year? All we heard last year was quarantine, lockdown, unprecedented times. I've just had enough of listening to all of those words. The last I vividly remember was March 2020 and within a blink of an eye, the entire year has passed and we are in a brand new year now. Many said that 2020 is cancelled and cracked so many jokes about it online on social media. But if you really make time to think about it, it wasn't only bad news, was it? I acknowledge that a majority of the population suffered due to the pandemic. But what about the others? What about me? What did I learn about the year that started off full of promises? Here are 11 things that I learned in the year 2020 in no particular order. I don't believe in luck or coincidences. I only believe that every good thing comes from God. This year has no doubt been tough for many people and I truly empathize for those who've lost their loved ones, those who've lost their livelihood and those who've had to suffer in many different ways. I've been unaffected health-wise personally and neither have my family or friends been affected as well and I'm very grateful for that. It's purely by God's grace that I've not had to suffer any of those insecurities. When I get bored doing the same thing, it's very refreshing to get out of my comfort zone to do something new. I always enjoy being behind the camera, whether it's photos or videos or whatever it may be. I've hated being in front of the camera as I am sitting at the moment. The very first video that I started in March, it took me hours to record a short, simple four or five minutes video. But now, as months progressed, I've improved so much more. I don't mind being spontaneous in front of the camera and it doesn't take so much of a starting problem for me now as it did in the past. It has been an expensive and time-consuming journey. However, I've enjoyed my time the most learning the loops and hoops of everything. And there is still a lot more to learn. I've just found joy doing this regardless of the turnaround. As a Christian, I've always been aware that I have a purpose in life and I have always moved towards it. But this year has been such a big reminder that I am still alive for a much greater purpose. I'm safe from what the world is going through because there's a lot more that God has to do with me. If I've been spared from what the world is going through, it is for a much bigger purpose. I just need to persevere and walk alongside God in order to achieve those and fulfill everything that he has for me. It isn't good enough if I were to sit still and come to an agreement with the others about what a rubbish year this has been. One of the events that has caused the biggest impact in my life in 2020 is being pregnant, of course. I've been married for about five and a half years now, and in my culture, it's normal to be pregnant within six months or three months of being married. Since that didn't happen to me, you can imagine the kind of pressure I faced. I received so many unsolicited advices and I was doing a lot on my part. I was taking prenatal tablets, I went to the doctors, I did so many investigations and no one could tell me what was wrong. Nothing was wrong with me and yet nothing was happening naturally. The only way forward was, according to my doctor's suggestion, was medical intervention, which I kept putting off for the longest time ever. God had given me a promise about having a baby back in August 2015. I was rather immature and didn't quite understand the seriousness of the entire thing. 
But that was the only thing that I held on to all these years. However, I can't say I was really good at it. There were times where I would lash out at God, I would just argue with Him and I would just go back to Him each and every time someone questioned me. But ultimately, when we found that we were pregnant, we were so shocked and yet we were completely at peace because it was God who intervened and I didn't. This made me realize that nothing in my life happens according to humanly standards. It is God who has called me who is faithful even when I am not. If he had promised, he will fulfill his promises according to his perfect timing, not according to my perfect timing or anyone else's estimation. Never take family and friends for granted. I lost an aunt to cancer in 2020. She was really dear to me. However, we never really spoke often enough. We were in different time zones. And I always looked at that as an excuse. Although we don't speak so much, we're always in each other's thoughts. But that isn't good enough. My biggest regret when I first heard about her passing is that I didn't talk to her when I could have. Now there isn't anything that I can do about it. It takes a lot of intention on my part to make sure that I keep in touch with people that I love. I also realized that you can have friends like family, but you can never let your family slip away like friends. I don't have my own siblings but I have a lot of cousins all over the world and I'm very close with all of my cousins and all of my aunts and uncles and everyone. Just name it and I'm close with all of my family. It is true that blood is thicker than water even when they are extended family members. It only takes a bit of intention to maintain that relationship but it's extremely important to do that. Everyone has the same 24 hours in a day. Some people are able to achieve so much more while the others aren't. It's about prioritizing and utilizing your time accordingly. I've learned several new skills this year, like setting up this YouTube channel, learning Final Cut Pro, learning several other skills online in order to help me do whatever that I'm doing at the moment. And everything that I've learned for this YouTube channel, I've been able to utilize it for my church online live stream services as well. You would think that being in a lockdown would save you a lot more cost because you're working from home, you aren't going out shopping because none of the shops are open, you're not going out to eat because the restaurants and cafes are closed, no traveling abroad, no birthday gifts, no wedding gifts, none of those things. But no, that wasn't applicable to me at all. I've spent so much money this year that I normally wouldn't have in any other given years. I spent it all on technology and equipment, but my only consolation is that I use it for my personal development and my own personal investment. I've been blessed that I've been able to invest a lot in this channel by ensuring that I get the right equipment and making sure that the quality is good. I've always believed in investing in myself and I'm glad that I've been able to do it without expecting anything in return. I've learned to understand and appreciate the different seasons in life. I'm a planner and a creature of habit. I like to be occupied and busy all the time. But even through that, I've now learned that it is okay to rest and relax as and when I need to. It's okay to relax from time to time so that you can be well rested to conquer the next thing that you need to. It is important to differentiate between work and play. You need both of these to function normally in life, but yet it is very important to draw a line to differentiate between the two. I started working from home in March when lockdown first started and I found it extremely difficult to tune off after 5pm because there was just so much work to do. It wasn't expected of me at all, but I am a workaholic and I'm not able to stop unless the work stops coming through. It took a lot of effort on my part to set my boundaries right and to differentiate these things so that I wasn't worn out at the end of the day. This actually applies to anyone and everyone. I'm usually not one to avoid any sort of confrontation. In fact, I'm the one who normally initiates discussions to find some sort of a resolution. Sometimes though, I do avoid conflicts because I want to avoid any sort of awkward conversation or situations. I've tried to turn a blind eye or even convince myself that I'm the one who has all of these thoughts in my mind, but that's not the case at all. You'll be surprised by the number of times when you do have a discussion about a conflict, 
The person in the opposite party is not even aware of how you feel or how you think. And initiating these discussions will actually help both of you resolve your conflicts and it'll help the other party look at things the way you look at it too. I've now learned to deal with it there and then rather than prolonging it. It applies to work, family, even friends. If the opposite party didn't mean what you think they meant, it gives them a chance to explain themselves or maybe even correct themselves, whichever applies. I am a classic example of an introverted extrovert. I enjoy talking to people while I still enjoy listening to them as well. Although I'm a little bit quiet in a big group, I would always love communicating with people regardless. This year has definitely made me realize that I dislike Zoom calls, I dislike FaceTime, I don't like talking to people over the phone. I just want to see people face to face, give me the real deal. I want to be able to talk to someone without having to wait for the internet to buffer and catch up with me. Although I self-isolated for most of the year, there were times where I was so annoyed with it, but I moved on anyway. Those were the lessons that I learned in 2020. It was definitely a tough year for many, an eye-opening year for some, and cancelled by some. But as for me, it was definitely a valuable year. What doesn't break you only makes you stronger. As cliche as it may sound, it's definitely true. What about you? How has 2020 been for you? I hope you found my lessons useful and I would like to hear from you how 2020 has been with you. Share with me about it in the comments below. If you haven't given it a thought yet, I would highly recommend you to. You would be surprised by how much you've missed and how much you can learn for the year that is yet to come. Once again, I want to wish you a very blessed new year. I pray that you walk into the new year with hope and with a fresh pair of eyes. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you again in the next one as always. Bye!